Hey everyone, welcome to the Oakler Ritz YouTube channel. As you can tell, today's video is a little bit different. We're not in the sewing studio today. Instead, we are in my office. My office is kind of a catch-all for a lot of business things right now. So we've got everything in here. We've got my computer and all of my business resources. We have a bunch of embroidery things. We have another laser. We have a heat press, another embroidery machine. We have a lot of things in here, including my industrial machine. Today's video, we're going to um, use it because we haven't in a long time. So my industrial sewing machine is a Juki 1541S. It is a very powerful machine. I firmly believe that this type of machine is capable of sewing things that my Bernina cannot sew. I've had a few people disagree with me on that, but I do believe at least it's easier to sew some things like thick leather, things like that on this machine versus on the Bernina. And honestly, this is just a really, really popular machine for bag makers, especially bag makers who are selling very like nice custom bags for a higher price. Um, and I just wanted to have some experience with it, but unfortunately with life, work, lasers, kids, uh, everything happening, I haven't had much time to play with this machine. So I haven't been able to do tutorials on it. And I figure, you know what, if I'm gonna like spend the time to see how to make it work again and relearn the whole thing, Let's just do it together. Let's just do it together. So if you're new to the Oakler's YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. Not sure if we're gonna have timestamps today. We are going to sew something, hopefully. I It always gets a little, a little rough when I use this machine, purely because I don't use it much. Uh, so I'm not familiar with it. It's just kind of like hanging out with a stranger. It gets a little awkward sometimes. Uh, we'll figure it out. So I purchased my machine from Juki Junkies, which is down in Tampa. They are a very popular resource for this machine. Uh, besides being a wonderful local shop, they do ship all over the place. I probably even worldwide. Uh, they ship everywhere. Um, they're also a great resource for help. So not only can you call them and talk to the owner, talk to everybody, get answers to questions right away, any problems you have, they'll help you out with it, FaceTime them, all that stuff. Not only can you do that, they also have their own YouTube channel. And I will be honest with you, I was just going over this, trying to figure out what do I need to oil, what do I need to check for, and I Googled like how to oil this, and Gigi over at Juki Junkie, she's the first, her video is the first one to pop up with exactly how to oil this. And it's very detailed, very, you know, it's a seven minute long video, so it's not a lot of fluff. Um, and it got to the point right away and I got all my questions answered. So with regards to oiling, I'm not gonna walk you through how to do it. I will link the video down below on how to oil this machine because that's gonna be more <laughs> informative than I will. Uh, today's more of like, kind of like a, a chit chat, a vloggy type sewing chit chat. I will tell you though that, um, this fun little oiling tool is very handy for this machine and somebody at some point decided they were going to lay it on its side in my sewing space over here. So now I have a little metal bin that is completely full of oil and other sewing supplies and I had very little of this. So hopefully I oiled it enough so that it doesn't cause a problem. I'll tell you what, this machine is so dusty too because we're doing renovation in a room right next to this room. Oh guys. Okay, the only little tip reminder thing I wanted to tell you guys is that when you are oiling this machine, you have to like, I'll show you, you have to like lift it up. You can kind of see in the corner of your screen. You have to kind of lift the whole thing up. Here, let me get my other camera in. I'll give you a, I'll give you a look, see. Okay, so you see how we just lift this whole thing up like that. And rests all like that. And then we have a bunch of oiling we have to do down here. In order to lift it up, you have to take out the knee press. And I'll tell you, Again, I don't use this machine very much, so every single time I have to do something, it's like the first time I've done it, even though I have done it before. So taking off the knee lift, I'm like sitting here like, do I need a screwdriver? Just, if you have one of these, you just actually pull it out. You just pull it out. You pull out the knee lift and then you can lift up. And then you can lift up your machine, which took me a good chunk of time to remember. And I gotta pull this thing down. There's the thing about these industrial machines, guys. They're not, they're not light. They're not tiny. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna put the knee lift back. All right, some things about this room. I have this great computer chair. This I got this computer chair at the advice of uh, Lauren Warmino. She uses one of these awesome chairs in her sewing room. It's very comfy. Uh, however, my setup in this room, there is carpet in this room. So I have like a plastic mat underneath my sewing machine. And then my chair is just kind of like at an angle on it. So if you see me really struggling, uh, it has nothing to do with the chair or the machine. It has to do with my setup. 
So as you can see, I have my machine all ready to go. It's oiled, I think, and then I've got some thread over here. I'm going to have to relearn how to thread this machine. I think I remember how to do this. I do not remember how to do this. I do not remember how to thread this machine. Dang it. I was really hoping it would come back to me. I know it goes through a, um, dang it. Once again, I'm going to be looking up how to thread this machine. Gigi, do you have something on this? Let me see. Ah ha ha, look at this. Junkie Here we go. Thank you for joining in on this YouTube video. Jukey Junkies, they have a threading video. Thank you so much, guys. But sometimes when I see these videos, I feel like maybe they saw me struggle and they're like, you know what? <laughs> Let's make life a little easier. And it does. How do you know if the tension is way too tight? Because I just threaded everything. And look, when I pull on this thread, it pulls my needle. Like I can't. I can't actually pull any thread. Is that, is this tension like way too much? Oh, that's better. I think it was like way too high of a tension because now that's the thing about this machine. I never quite got the tension exactly the way I want it. I need to go find some scrap material, hold on. All right, so here is the leather I'll be working with today. I'm gonna to cut off a small scrap of it to uh, to test out. I get so nervous with this machine, why? I'm a sewer. Okay, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. <laughs> okay, I have people ask me all the time whenever I sew my videos how I sew the sewing part up. You can see the camera's like, it's, it's right between my legs and I just, it is what it is. Okay, so I need to put my bobbin back in. Oh boy, oh boy. I'm gonna have to do it like this. I never know if I'm doing this right or not. I don't think I, I don't think I did the bobbin right. Oh. <laughs> okay, we can do it. No, no, no. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is, this is not going well so far and we haven't even started sewing. My fingers are kind of oily from oiling the machine, so I can't seem to hold on to this bobbin. And now I'm trying to wind it with my hands, which is never ideal. It's never how you want to wind a bobbin. <sighs> See, this is this is a thing. It's like if I was just on my own right now, I would be like, okay, I tried. I'm gonna go finish my project on my Bernina. But that's not how you get better at this stuff. You don't get better by not using it. I just, am I putting the bobbin in upside down? I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lift up the machine. If I can. Jeez. So I'm gonna see if I can get this bobbin in here. Okay, I believe I have the bobbin in the way it's supposed to go in. I know so many of you right now, this is the machine you use all the time and you're just like dying. Cause it's like, Jessica, it's not that hard. Why are you making it look so hard? I promise I'm not trying to make it look hard. It genuinely is, like this is this is my learning curve. You know, this is why I feel like I'm somewhat decent at teaching things because I struggle, ooh, I got it. I struggle so much with patterns, material, machines, um, that by the time I actually kind of get it, then like, I can now teach it. <laughs> Obviously I'm not there yet with this machine. All right, now the scary part, actually sewing something, Whew. so scary. Let me just do, I'm just gonna hand crank it first just to make sure it actually like isn't going to hit anything. Okay, I'm gonna take it up real quick. And we're gonna look at the tension from just those couple of stitches. Here is the front and then here is the back. So I feel like the tension might need to be a little bit tighter on top, which I really don't want to do, but okay, let's try it. Let's try double folding it and we'll see what that does. Let's see what that does. I'm gonna try back stitching too. Okay. Okay, so far so good. Whenever whenever I'm like doing okay, I have a lot of fun with this machine. It's a uh, it's when something doesn't work, I get scared. 
because it's just such a powerful machine. I'm just so afraid the like the needle's gonna break in half and like go into my face. Okay, so here we go. You can see the blue line right there. That is the top. It's the top thread. And I would say that looks okay. So you see on the back how we're pulling that blue thread to the back? That's not ideal. That means that the tension for the bobbin is stronger than the tension for the top because the bobbin's pulling that thread down and the top thread isn't pulling it up. This is why I end up getting it to, I'm just gonna tighten up the tension a little bit. We'll see what happens, I guess. All right, let's try another, another row of stitching, I guess. My thread shredded. Why did my thread shred? Well, that's unfortunate. I think it is the thread shred because it's two tens now. What am I doing wrong? We have this conversation every single time I get on this machine. I look at you, you look at me. I say, what am I doing wrong? You guys give me all this advice. And then I'm just like so overwhelmed that I decide not to use my machine for six months. And then we come back and we have the same exact conversation again. So there's the top thread, looking good. And then there is the bobbin thread, the back. I feel like it looks better. I don't see the top thread being pulled down. So I feel like tension-wise, from the way the thread looks, I feel like tension-wise, we're good. I'm a little concerned that my thread got shredded. Um, that could be a number, number of things, but we'll see. Okay, so I feel like we are ready to sew. So what are we sewing? So I put a poll up on Instagram asking folks what I should sew. Um, it was very close between the Anna, uh, the little Anna envelope that we do and a snack bag. Um, and then there was a lot of those suggestions. I, I tried to be clear that I need to be something quick and I had a lot of suggestions for very elaborate bags, which I hear you, I, I know. I, I wanna make a really elaborate bag on this machine as well and we will. I just have to, I have to consistently work on it and get comfortable because the worst thing is to have all this really expensive, nice material and you spend all this time cutting it out and then it just, you just botch it, you know? So we will, we'll make a really, real fancy bag. But first we gotta make something not quite as fancy. So we're gonna make a leather snack pouch. So we're gonna use that same leather. I've already got it cut out. I, I even used my templates. I don't ever use my templates. So I have my two outer panels. These are just like the big one, not two tone. And then I have some fun waterproof canvas for the lining. I have a zipper my bag tag, which is cork, and then zipper tab. And that's all I got, which I think is all I need. So what should we do first? Should we do the tab first? Is this gonna be big enough? Yeah. So since I'm using a piece of leather for the zipper tab, I'm actually not gonna double fold it because leather can be left raw edge. I'm not edge coating anything with this leather. Um, I could, but I'm not going to. So pretty much all I'm gonna do is just take my piece of leather. This is one inch by three inches, and I'm just gonna wrap it around the raw edge of my zipper here. And I'll just grab some clips and clip it together. There we go. And then I'm just gonna pull up the other end of my zipper tape and grab some clips and clip it around the edge of the zipper. My zipper is not metal, it is plastic, so I'm not sewing over any metal or anything like that. One thing, if you do it this way, just make sure you check both sides and that they're matched up. You don't want the back a lot higher than the front because then when you sew it down, you're not gonna catch the back. So now I'm gonna sew this down. I don't even know what my stitch, I don't even know what my stitch like this. Uh, it looks like I'm at like a, how do you know? Like where's the arrow for the stitch length? So is this dot here indicative of your stitch length? Cause uh, I'm just a past a five then. Try to figure out which lighting is best for this for you and for me. Okay, so, oh we let's try, see what happens. Oh no, <laughs> anything that can go wrong will go wrong. My clip broke, what the heck? How does that even happen? Oh my gosh, guys. I don't care if the universe is telling me not to do this. I want to do this. So we're, we're gonna make it happen one way or another. I 
I know someone's gonna ask me what my needle size is. I have no idea. Whatever it was for my last project, that's what my needle size is. I did not change out my needle because I honestly don't remember what size I'm supposed to use. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it. Okay, let's trim this down. I feel like, I feel like it looks pretty good. I'm gonna show you guys a lot of stitches today. It's not straight, but that's okay. I feel like it looks, it's fine. It's all fine. Let's trim it down and see how it looks in. So you can see I just trimmed down the zipper. I just trimmed down the little pieces of leather so that it's the same width as my zipper. I didn't go all the way to the end like I should have. Whoopsie daisy. Whoo-wee, man. I feel like doing something like this, it really it really humbles you, you know? Knocks you down a few, a few notches. Yeesh. Okay, so here is my zipper. Very cute. Little bits of leather, okay, okay. Okay, so now another hard part, I'm going to attach my bag tag to my bag. Now, typically not, not a hard thing to do, um, but for me, today, everything is a little difficult. And you can see it just kind of blends in with it. That's funny. Um, where do I wanna, I'm not gonna be too picky about where it is. It's probably going to be a little crooked, but that's okay. Honestly, today it's just, can we complete the bag, not, can we make it look absolutely amazing? I mean, hopefully it looks amazing. When in doubt, just hand crank it out, you know? Okay. I hope that worked. Not perfectly straight, but that's okay. Pretty, pretty okay. I think one of the things I still have to figure out with this machine is like, where the seam allowance is based on the foot. So with, of course, with my Bernina, I have a very good idea of where a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch, all the different seam allowances are based on where the fabric is lining up with the presser foot. Uh, with this one, I have no idea. I know a lot of people use seam guides. So I think the foot I'm using is a pretty narrow foot. I've been told to get a more narrow foot. I have stuff here. Oh yeah, I forgot I have stuff here. So like I've got this foot here, which I think is supposed to be a more narrow foot. I'm not, you know what? No, we're not gonna, we're not gonna mess with that today. I, I can't, I, I just need to learn the bare necessities today. I don't have, um, I don't have the skill set yet to start changing out presser feet and accessorizing this machine just, just yet. But I do have that foot, which does look a lot more narrow. I, I remember there was a period of time where a lot of you guys were sending me a message saying, um, there was a more narrow presser foot available for this so you don't have to like have a zipper foot or anything um, And I got it. I just don't know if that's it. Let me see what it says on it. I mean it is a lot more You see this Here I'll show you down here. You see it's a lot more narrow than my one here, but I don't know I don't know. I can't I really want to try it, but I can't risk it right now. I can't risk it just yet. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put all these pieces together. So snack bag, we've made this tons of times. Find your midpoints on your zipper. Find your midpoints on your two exterior panels. I like to use scissors for that. But if you're using scissors to cut the midpoints on your zipper tape, just make sure you also take a lighter to those little cuts so that your zipper tape doesn't fray. And then I'm going to fold my leather panels and find the midpoints along the top of those the same way and trim with my scissors. Now this leather, leather is such, such a different beast. Uh, so with leather, when you buy it, you buy it by the size, but it's also, you also buy it by like the thickness. Um, and so there's a lot of, if you like, I put in a really nice leather order with this wonderful leather company and they asked me so many questions about 
details for the leather and I couldn't answer him because I had, I have no idea. I just don't, so again, I can't answer details about my, you know, Juki. Um, I don't have experience working with it. So I hope to, it's, it's a goal for this year. It was a goal for last year, but it's a goal for this year to like learn more about material like leather. Um, it's a great, you know, material to work with. Um, and it will last a long, long time. Um, but I just don't know. I don't know a whole lot about it. And I know a lot of times too, when you work with leather, you will, um, like thin down the edges so that it's not so bulky in the seam, which sounds great. Uh, I have a tool for that. It's currently completely soaked in oil. Cause like I said, this thing was put on its side. Okay. So just like we've done countless times, zipper and exterior panel, right sides together. I'm going to use some clips to hold it together. This is not like a proper tutorial guys, because we've, we've done this tutorial a lot. This is mostly just to hang out with me. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm obviously not trying to sell you anything because, um, I still don't know this machine well enough. I get asked all the time, like, should I buy an industrial sewing machine for bag making? And my, my opinion is this, like if you've been a bag maker for a while, and you want to up your game. Yeah, just, I mean, for sure, buy one, get one. Like if you've been doing this for a while, 100%. Um, if you're just starting out, I mean, there's plenty of people, this is their first machine. There's plenty of bag makers out there where this Juki 1541S was their very first sewing machine and they're wildly successful. So I can't tell you not to do that, but um, is it necessary? I know. You can make some great bags on other machines. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's an investment, you know, but a lot of machines are also investments. So I'm gonna try sewing on this side, I think. Oh, I don't know. So right now I'm pretty much just basting down my zipper tape. Um, but typically I'll sew with my zipper foot so that my material is on the left side and there's empty space on the right side. But with this presser foot I'm using today, it's not a zipper foot and it has a left side and a right side. And the right side is more narrow on the presser foot than the left side. So I can get closer to the zipper, which is so I'm, I'm kind of doing the opposite of how I normally sew. I gotta try out that other zipper foot or I have to try out that other presser foot. But here we go. I've got my zipper basted in place. Um, now I'm going to take one of my lining panels and I'm going to lay my lining panel right side along the back of my zipper, but right side with my material and just line it up along that top edge and clip together along the top, top edge here. So I do feel like my stitch length is pretty long. So I'm going to knock it down to a four um, and see if that's good. Okay, and then once again, I'm going to try to sew with all my material on the right side. Um, here, I have one of these. This is like a seam gauge and I have a ruler. Ideally, I wanna sew at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna lower my needle, use my ruler here to find 3 eighths. Go like that. Let's see if I can get that close to the zipper or not. There we go. Definitely looks more like a half inch seam allowance, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. All right. So when I pull it.
the back. Can I see my zipper? Yeah, I can see my zipper. All right. So we're good. It wasn't too big. There we go. It wasn't too big. It wasn't too small. So now we're going to top stitch. So I'm going to pull these panels back. Um, and just like normal, I'm only going to top stitch where the zipper tape is. I'm not going to top stitch all the way to the very edge. I mean, I think this will look nice. Even if, even if I make every single mistake you can make, I think it'll still look really nice. Part of me wants to just have someone come over here and then just like optimize my machine, just make it amazing so that it just works for me. But then the other part of me is like, well, if you have somebody else do that, then um, how are you going to ever be able to do it yourself, you know? All right, so I'm gonna increase the stitch length to like five and a half for um, top stitching. And once again, I'm only top stitching where my zipper tape is, which is just, it's just hard to see, honestly. It's just hard to see. So I'm going to go like one or two stitches forward. Okay, I think we're okay. It's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. All right, you wanna take a look at it? Here we go. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, when you look at it really close, you can definitely see flaws, but overall, I think it looks really, really good. Well, there we go. Boop the lee. <laughs> okay, confidence boost number one. Good, good. So now we just have to repeat that with the other side. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so I have my back panel here and my zipper. I'm gonna take the other side of the zipper, place them right sides together, lining them up at their midpoint marks. All right, so we're going to baste this on first. I'm just hoping I don't run out of bobbin thread because I don't remember how to wind a bobbin and I don't wanna have to do it. Got it basted. It's getting a little bit easier. It's getting a little easier. However, my chair is moving farther and farther away from the sewing machine because it's going down the hill. I gotta figure that out. So like I said, my room here has carpet, so we have to have like a plastic mat underneath it. Um, maybe I just need to get like a bigger plastic mat or a different chair that doesn't roll. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, finally, lining, right side on the back of the zipper. Just line it up with the top panel. I feel like this snack bag uh, pattern is a really good go-to pattern to like test out new things, test out new material, test out new machines, test things out because it's it's not a whole lot of stuff. So if it just crashes and burns, um, you didn't waste a whole bunch of material on it. Um, and it doesn't have to, like there's a lot of wiggle room here. It's not a perfectionist pattern. So if it, if it doesn't turn out great, great, it's still pretty good and usable. Um, but if it does turn out really great, then again, you have like the most usable pouch. So I'm gonna go back down to four on my, on my thing. And I'm gonna put my seam guide back and measure out three eighths of an inch. Let's just see if we can sew this sucker together, huh? Oh dear, I forgot to put the foot down. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> that was not fun. Okay. Don't forget to move the zipper. I'm trying to sew really close to the zipper teeth. So I don't want to sew the zipper though. Okay. 
I'm still just really scared of this thing, honestly. Cause it's again, like the, it's all powerful. It's, and it's like, I was just thinking, it's like, it's kind of like a pushy machine. Like I had my knee pretty close to the knee lift whenever I was trying to put it down and get moving. And like the knee lift like pushed my knee out of the way. It was like, get out of here. Like it's pushy, you know? And the machine is really powerful and pushy. And it just all feels kind of pushy right now. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's supposed to be like that, but it's, it's not delicate, you know, it's not, it's not a delicate machine. Like a lot of sewing machines that you would use for quilting and things they do, they have kind of like a daintiness feel to them, a delicate feel, thin needles, lightweight, you know, this is not that. Like that's what I get so nervous about with that needle is that if it's my bone versus that needle, my bone's not going to win. That needle is definitely going to win. Okay, now I'm just gonna top stitch only where the zipper teeth are and that's also the thing the presser foot is so big and it's just it's like really big and it's black and so i can't see through it and so like right now i'm trying to figure out where my needle is because i want to put my needle down in the right spot but it's just hard to see where that is Oh, I forgot to change my stitch length. Whoops. Well, that's gonna look wonky now. I just changed it. You, I don't normally recommend doing that. Don't change your stitch length halfway through a top stitch, but I did it. It is what it is. Sometimes it's just how it goes. All right, let's take a look at that. It's gonna look so silly. I mean, I've made worse things. I've, I've done worse top stitching, so. I'm sure it's fine. So you see over here, teeny tiny, a little bit bigger. I mean, it's not terrible. Again, I've, I've made worse. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through and any little tails I have, I'm going to melt them down just so they're not sticking out, looking all crazy. Alrighty, I mean, I don't wanna jinx anything, but I think we're doing okay. So now I'm gonna move my zipper to the center of the bag and we're gonna pull the exteriors right sides together and the linings right sides together and clip together. Okay, so we might run into a problem here because by adding that leather onto the end of our zipper tape, because the leather is so thick, it did add some length to our zipper tape. So typically our zipper tape would be seven and a half inches finished after the zipper tab but with the thick leather, it's a little bit longer than that. So you can see, I like there to be a lot of space on the sides between the edge of the lining and exterior and the zipper tab, and there's not. There's not a ton of space there. So I have to be really careful because I do not want to sew on my zipper tab. I don't want to sew over my zipper tab, and I don't have a proper zipper foot on this machine. So I have to figure out how to get as close as I can to that zipper tab without sewing on it on both sides, it's gonna be a little tricky. Also, I'm gonna be sewing, you know, just waterproof canvas here and then leather over here. Let me clip the bottom of this and I'll be leaving an opening on the bottom of the lining. We're just, we're just gonna, we'll figure it out. We'll make it work. It'll, some, it'll work out. All right, I got the eye protection for this part because I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. Well, only one, one way to do it, right? Just give it a, give it a whirl. Give it a twirly whirl. What is the seam allowance over here? So that, I have my tape at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, but I need to be able to go close on the sides. So I'm gonna have to sew this with the bag in here because this right side gets closest to there. So I'm gonna have to measure this out. Oh, it's so scary. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you know, like how do we even get in there, you know? I'm gonna just stop on the lighting part and see if I can figure out. I'm always trying to cut my thread on the side of the machine like my Bernina. How are we gonna get in there? Cause that machine does not want to go like that from such a thin bit to such a bulky bit. See the, the layer that I needed to sew through is not that thick. It's just the bit next to it that's really, really thick. Hmm, how do we want to do that? I'm gonna just hand crank over it maybe? that I think we're gonna have to kind of come back and address that that bit over there somehow I can't seem to sew sew that that seam over there hmm so yeah for now I guess we're just gonna sew around it and then revisit it and see if we can get it to work on its own. Hmm. Issues. Issues. do some problem solving. I don't know what to do about that seam. And see that makes me nervous because this is some this is material I would pick for lots of bags. Maybe my leather is just way too thick for this project. Maybe I needed to do that whole like shaving down the edges of it. I don't know. I'm gonna try to trim this up. Just trim off all the threads and everything and maybe get a better look at what I'm working with. So I was even trying to hand crank it, but because the presser foot was up so high, it was like, it wasn't moving the material. It was just, the needle was just going up and down. It's obviously not what I wanted. hand cranked it and then just moved it by my hand every little bit. I don't know. That's not ideal. Let's look at these crazy looking stitches. I'm pretty sure my machine just locked on me too. I was really hoping I could go a project without the machine locking on me. It does this sometimes where it just like completely locks up. And I can't get it to turn at all. It's like a safety mechanism on it or something. But I don't know why it does it. I didn't do anything. Why, why do you lock up on me? 
Yeah, it's like I can't turn the wheel forward or back. It's just like, it's like it's hitting the bobbin. <laughs> Why? I don't know what causes that. That's very frustrating though. Let me just show you. Okay, so there's no bobbin in there and I'm just trying to see my needle and whenever I put it down, do you see how it bends? I don't know if you can see. Can you see how the needle bends? You see that? You see that? Do you see how it bends? That needle's about to break if I keep pushing it. Why? Why is it bending? <laughs> I'll tell you, every single time I use my machine, every time I do a project on there, I have this exact same problem. The machine locks up, the needle starts bending, and I don't know why. I don't know what I did. It's like I really want to love this machine, but I don't know. I don't know how to love this machine. Because I, I, I don't know how to get this machine to just work. I can't even get it to unlock anymore. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take that needle out of there before it breaks. See, I'm so close to. So close being done with the project. If you have a Juki 1541S, do you have this problem a lot? Do you have a problem where the machine locks up on you and then like you can't unlock it or your needle starts bending for some reason and you don't know why? Because I've looked this up and I've talked to some of you guys about this before and sometimes you guys say, oh yeah, the timing might be off and stuff like that. But here's the thing, like if every single time I do a project, it's, I trigger something to make the timing off and I have to like, that's just, that's a lot. That can't be right. I've I've seen so many of you guys making so many projects. There's no way you would be making bags if you encountered these problems every single time you tried to make something simple. There's no way. It has to be user error or just something kind of wonky with my machine. Now I gotta figure out what needle I was using. Oh my gosh. Every, this is the bin where the oil spilled and everything is soaking. All right, it's turning now without looking like it's bending, so that's a good sign, I guess. Now let's see if we can thread it and get it to sew something. And just like that. It locks again. I'm just threading it and it's locking. I promise you, I'm not trying to cause these problems. But now the problem is I'm trying to get my bobbin in there. I can't seem to get it to snap into place. And so I just kind of pushed it in there and now it's stuck and it can't. So either. I really want to make this machine work guys, but I don't know. This, this machine and I might not be meant to be. Okay, I think I got the bobbin in there. I stuck. Can't get the needle to go down there without bending. Why? Why doesn't the needle want to go down without bending? I don't think we're gonna be able to finish this bag, guys, but I will show you guys what I'm seeing, okay? So you can see, here's the needle. You can see, here's the needle up here. Here's my bobbin. Turn the hook. Needle, needle is currently hitting, hitting the bobbin casing. Well, friends, that's all, that's all I got. I can't, I can't get the bobbin into the machine at all anymore. I have no idea what the problem is. I will probably spend a few hours today YouTubing and Googling. Well, maybe not today, honestly. I've got a lot of work to do. Um, yeah, man, so close, so close. I really wanted this to turn out one day maybe, or maybe not, I don't know. I just, I don't know if it's my skill set or if it's, my machine or what, but every single time I sit down to do a project on this machine, I have the exact same problems. The machine locking, the bobbin doesn't fit, the needle starts bending because it's not hitting the right part of the bobbin. And then when I look it up, maybe it's the timing is off, but I don't know how to fix the timing and I, and I shouldn't have to adjust that every single time. Like I said, I know so many of you guys have this machine, so it's gotta be user error, but 
it makes it really hard for me to want to come back and use this machine again. So hopefully we'll have another video in the future that's like a redemption video. Like maybe we'll really figure out what's going on, what I'm doing wrong, or if there's something something not quite right with the machine, maybe we'll get that figured out um, and then we'll be able to move on and have a beautiful uh, leather bag making relationship. Otherwise, otherwise I might have to try something else. So if you have an industrial machine, let me know what kind you have. Let me know if you'll love it. Um, if you've ever experienced the same problems that I'm experiencing, please leave co comments down below. You can send me an email if you'd like. I'm jessica at oakwards.com. I would love some advice, love some help. Um, it's just very time consuming to fix these problems every time I use it. And um, I don't have a lot of time. So I, I, I just need it to work. You know, I need to be able to just sit down and have it work. And um, today's not that day. So hopefully, hopefully next time. So thanks for hanging out with me. I know this wasn't a proper tutorial and it was more kind of a whiny video because I don't know what I'm doing, but um, I hope it was somewhat informative for you. Um, I would probably say this video is more me getting advice from you rather than me giving you advice. Uh, but it, but if you did want to see po possible struggles of working with an industrial machine, I mean, hello, <laughs> here are possible struggles. Um, it might go a lot smoother for you. Uh, it might not. Um, Again, this is not every single industrial machine. This is just the one that I have. Uh, other ones might be a little bit easier. So there you go. All right. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye, guys.